Good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome back uh, for the second day of our FinTech conference. I'm really excited uh, for another great day of um, panels and conversation. Um, I, like you, learned a lot yesterday. Uh, and um, I am uh, very pleased um, that we can start our second day um, with a guest appearance um, by our president and executive vice president for academic affairs, Martin Filbert. Uh, Martin and I um, uh, both started in our new gigs this year um, uh, in August, and uh, it's been just a delight uh, to work with him. Um, and uh, uh, Martin, when he's not um, serving as the chief academic officer of the university, which is just a little, um, a little job, um, running 19 colleges and um, units around campus, uh, Martin is a professor of toxicology. Uh, he is the former dean of the School of Public Health. Uh, he's an expert in nanotechnology, uh, and he has um, done really um, exciting and innovative work on policies related to uh, differential uh, toxicology on the basis of um, uh, demographics. Uh, so uh, he's a serious guy. <laughs> so um, we are um, uh, delighted to have him here to um, welcome you to the second day of the conference. And please join me in thanking Martin Filbert for joining us today. Thank you, Michael. That was uh, far too kind. Um, and just before I start with my formal remarks, if anyone can help me understand the value of cryptocurrency in running a university, I see you outside at the end. Um, I'd also like to thank the United States Office of Financial Research for its support in this third annual gathering. I want to note with appreciation the contributions of Michigan faculty from at least six different disciplines and salute the staff at the Center on Finance, Law and Policy and in the Ford School and in the Law School for attending to the concerns, large and small, uh, that make this conference a success. It's a pleasure to add my welcome uh, to those you've already received. I understand that yesterday's program included stimulating addresses and productive discussions, all at the nexus of financial policy and technological innovation. Having conference participants from several sectors of the economy has surely led to interesting conversations that mix policy and practice. We are pleased that this gathering is being held here at Michigan. The university has a long-standing commitment to bringing interdisciplinary expertise to bear on complex challenges. Disciplinary knowledge is critical to defining, exploring, and understanding a problem, but interdisciplinary work is key to moving forward to solutions. The parable of the streetlight is often cited and sometimes oversighted by academics, but I think it's useful uh, as an illustration here. The story uh, when told about economists, and uh, at least in England we refer to them as inebriated economists, uh, can be told about sociologists, biologists, or philosophers. It goes like this. A policeman is out patrolling one night and comes upon uh, the economist, in whatever state they may be, searching the ground under the streetlight. Uh, the policeman asks, uh, what are you doing here looking for my keys? The economist replies, I dropped them on my way home. The policeman drops to his knees and aids in the search, and after... Quite a few minutes have elapsed. Uh, the policeman turns to the economist and says, are you sure you dropped them here? I have no idea, came the reply. I know I dropped them somewhere between here and the office. So the policeman says, why are you looking here? To which the obvious reply came back, the light is better here. The street lights are like disciplines. They illuminate, they illuminate defined areas and sometimes well-trod areas. But many interesting questions lie beyond the circle of light, between the areas illuminated by disciplines. And so we turn to interdisciplinary work 
As Scott Page, a faculty member here in political science, e economics and complex systems has shown, work drawing on the knowledge of a diverse group of experts is generally far better than work done by experts with similar backgrounds. In his book, The Difference, Page suggests that progress and innovation depend less on brilliant individuals acting alone and more on diverse groups working together, building on each other's strengths. He argues rather convincingly and with data at hand that groups with a range of perspectives outperform groups of like-minded experts. As Dean of the School of Public Health, I learned very quickly and developed a keen appreciation for the value of diverse perspectives. Indeed, progress in the field depends on them. Your agenda throughout this conference includes time to consider the delicate balance between research and experimentation and policy. My own experience as a toxicologist working in nanotechnology involved similar work how we move from bench science to appropriate public policies on the use of new technologies was the question that we addressed. It's critical to have room for innovations in any field, but we have also a responsibility to consider larger questions of public good as we move towards the application of new knowledge. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you for being here. It's a privilege to uh, have you here at the University of Michigan. I look forward to hearing great things about this conference. And as always, go blue.